Hi everyone and welcome to Squirrel Pie Productions. My name is Tommy. You can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Dynamite Trujillo. Welcome to episode 85 of my podcast. Thank you so much for being here. If you're a new viewer, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, a big welcome back. We are in the middle of a really bright and sunny and breezy and beautiful Friday afternoon. And we have show notes for this episode right down below in the description box. In the show notes, you will find a link, a link to our Ravelry group. And that's where you'll find super fun things like make-alongs. And we do have a make-along happening right now. We have the flash email going, and that is where you can make anything from now until the end of the year. Whoops are welcome. That is flashy or uh, showy or... Um, a statement piece. So any craft, as long as it's a garment or a shawl, is welcome in this make-along. Uh, you can put it up on Instagram, whatever you're working on, using the hashtag FlashyMal. And uh, we can all join in together. It is super fun. Thank you to everybody who is participating. I do have a little bit of news about my own flashy make-along project that I will get into later in the episode. My other announcement is that I am doing Vlogtober for the second year, and uh, it's been really, really fun. I'm having a blast making short vlogs every day. I really enjoy the format. I really enjoy editing, and uh, so thank you for those of you who have been watching or following along and all of that fun stuff, participating. I love talking to you guys in the comments. So that is happening on this channel. As I'm sure you are aware, if you are subscribed, you are probably getting notifications every day that I'm coming out with a video every single day, which I know is a lot. But um, it's going to go through the end of the month, and then it'll be over. <laughs> so I hope I'm not um, getting too spammy with my daily videos. But um, it's been really fun. Like I said, thank you. Thank you so much to everybody who has been taking part in Vlogtober. So today I am wearing some handmade pieces. Uh, I am wearing one of my very favorite cardigans that I have knit. It's the Like a Cloud cardigan by Hoagie Locatelli. And uh, there will be information about this cardigan in my Ravelry Project page, which I will link in the show notes below. And um, I love this sweater so much. It's really wearable. It's really practical. And um, if you want to make one of these things, you should totally make one and enter into Volumvine's Practical. There's my, there's my pitch for that. So, um, uh, I just love this sweater so much. It's my favorite. My very favorite. Um, and then underneath, I am wearing the Uniform Tunic by Greenland Studios. And uh, this is a sewing pattern that was initially put out in partnership with Matter, who designed the uniform cardigan or sweater. It's a sweater. I can't, I, I think there's a pullover version. Maybe not. I'm not going to keep talking about that because I don't know, but I have the whole little booklet that has the sweater and the tunic patterns in them. Um, so I've made the tunic pattern. I like it. Okay. It's for me, it's something that I wear uh, at home a lot when I have like a day to myself at home and I know I'm going to be dying or cleaning the house, things like that, because it's got these really big, amazing pockets that are here and they're just really good for stuff like that. Like if I'm listening to something on my phone, I can put my phone in those pockets and it's perfect. Like if I'm wearing headphones or even just using the speaker on my phone or whatever, but, um, it's a really great kind of practical piece in that sense. Uh, I don't love it for going out in because I feel like I'm wearing scrubs. And that may be because I work in a dental office. So whenever I go to work, I'm surrounded by people wearing scrubs. And I, I'm a receptionist. I don't wear scrubs to work. But I do wear this to work sometimes. And it always just kind of feels like I'm wearing scrubs. But it could be the material. I used a poplin, which is a really thin cotton, very non-drapey kind of fabric. And as you may or may have not picked up from my sewing journey through the podcast, I am 
really just starting to understand what fabrics are good for what types of garment. And I'm really just starting to understand the concept, not the concept, because I understand the concept of drape, but I'm starting to understand how that relates to fabric and its relation to like fabric thickness. So I don't know, I might make another one of these at some point uh, out of a different material and see if I feel the same way about it. Like I said, I really like wearing it at home. It's sleeveless, but there is a sleeved version um, of the pattern. So anyway, that's what I'm wearing today because I, I did do some dyeing this morning and uh, I plan to clean my house after I record the podcast, so perfect. All right, let's move on to my knitting. I have no finished objects again this week. I um, My knitting has been cut down just a little bit because my a lot of my free time has been taking up uh, with vlog stuff, like a lot of my time that I usually spend knitting, like during my daughter's naps. I uh, usually use that time to knit, but I have this past month been using that time to like edit video and stuff like that, which is totally fine. But I have no finished objects. But I am working on a few things that I am super stoked about, and I have a another not so stoke worthy project to share with you as well. So on to my first work in progress. I like to show off socks first because for some reason I have developed the format in my podcast of going from like smallest to biggest whip. So socks are always first. So here's my sock whip. It is living in my emerald fibers bag, which is beautiful. And I love it. Here we go. These are some socks I'm working on. They are West Yorkshire Spinners. And it's in their birds collection of colorways. It is the owl colorway. And here it is. Ba-bam. Uh, oh, also, here's the tag for all y'all who are interested in uh, tagage. Signature four ply is the base. Reared, sheared, and spun in Britain. I got this from the Wooly Thistle. Okay, so this is a top-down stockinette sock. I'm doing two-by-two two ribbing for the cuff. I cast on 72 stitches, I believe. Pretty sure. Pretty sure. Using a size US 1 needle on my Chiaogu Mini Twist Interchangeables. I typically knit socks these days on a size 0, but I'm knitting these on a 1 because I'm knitting them as a gift for a friend who is very knit worthy and he to get like his sizing I just had him try on a sock that I knit for Colin in similar yarn and for those socks I used a one because that's my that was my old sock needle of choice so I figured since I know what fit him I'm just going to replicate that so the fabric is very is much looser than I'm used to now for socks. I tend to like a more dense fabric for my socks these days, but um, I think it's gonna be great. I also think like a looser, looser fabric, while it may not wear as well as a denser fabric, it might provide more stretch because, you know. Uh, hand knit socks in stockinette aren't the uh, stretchiest things in the world compared to like uh, commercial wool socks, which are very like, you can get them on anything and they'll stick onto anything. I don't know what I'm talking about. So I, I don't know you guys. I am really enjoying knitting these socks. I love a good plain stockinette sock and I really, really like this kind of self patterning yarn. And so I'm enjoying these very, very much. This is the first sock that I've been working on. Um, I've been making slow progress on this. I put it down for a little while because I've been so focused on sweater knitting that I kind of put down all of my socks. Uh, but I picked this up again because I um, had a power outage at my house. In fact, many places in California had power outages the past few days. Um, my power was out for just over, it was like 26 hours. Uh, it went off in the middle of the night and then came back on in the middle of the night the next night. Um, 
and they projected our power company projected that the outage would last at least three days so it only lasted one day which was great but um the one evening that we spent with no power hanging out by candlelight in the evening uh i tried to knit on a more complicated project and i could not so i got out my vanilla sock and it was perfect all right my next work in progress is a sweater that you saw last time and it is living in my fat squirrel project bag it is the Telegram Cardigan by Becky Sorensen. So this is a test knit, and I'm in the middle of a row. It's a test knit for Becky. Uh, and I know that I stopped where I stopped last night because it was getting late and I got to the section where I had to do a cable and I was like, I'm not in the right state of mind to be doing a cable. So I just stopped knitting. That's the story of why I'm in the middle of a row. So, this pattern is has not been released yet, but it will be released at some point in the future. As soon as it does, I will let you know. Um, but here's where I'm at so far. So this is a top-down cardigan. It's got an all-over texture pattern. It's a raglan style cardigan. And it's got this really super cool cable pattern down the sides, and it will also go underneath the sleeve. And there it is from the back. I am knitting the smallest size, which is the size one, and I cannot tell you what the bust measurement on that is because I forgot, but I will tell you that later, maybe when the pattern comes down. <laughs> I have the information, but it's somewhere. Anyway, um, she is going to be offering a really nice range of sizes for this pattern, uh, so you can probably find all that information when the pattern's released. So like I said, I'll let you know. Uh, Anywho, I love it so much. So the yarn that I'm using is Mondim, which is from Retrozaria, dyed by, you ready for it? La Bienname. Such an amazing collaboration, this yarn. I'm in love with it. I'm so in love with it. So um, this is the Quartz Fumé colorway, which I'm probably pronouncing wrong. That is French. I think it means smoky quartz. I was watching another podcast pretty recently, and I can't remember who. When they said it, I was like, I gotta write this down so I remember who said it, but then I forgot. So if it's you, I'm really sorry. But uh, somebody that I like <laughs> is knitting with some other yarn in the smoky quartz colorway. And I was like, that's what this is, Quartz Fumé. I don't know. Like I said, I could be saying that wrong. Moving on, I have, I purchased three skeins of this yarn. So here are the two that I have not broken into yet. Mondim is a 100% non-superwash Portuguese fingering weight yarn, and I love it. It's one of my very favorite sock yarns. I love it, like, a million times. I love it. And um, I feel really lucky that I get to use that yarn that was dyed by La Bienna May, who's another hand dyer that I am just absolutely in love with. And I've never actually had a chance to try her yarn in person. You know, because you try yarns in person. Um, so I was really happy to purchase this. And it's it's just beautiful. I just love it so much. It's a purpley gray. You know. So the cake that I'm currently working on is a here. This was my first skein. I am almost done with it. And I am pretty well into the body. So I'm imagining I'll break into the second skein a little bit before I'm completed, before I have completed the body. Um, so, and then I just have the sleeves to do. So this is really coming along. I am having a lot of fun with it. I can't wait till the pattern comes out so that you can knit it too if you're interested. Uh, it's, I think it's gonna be a really great sweater and it's a really great pattern. Bang up job, Becky. Sorry, I don't know what I'm talking about. Anyway, my third project is a sweater that I have decided to design myself for some reason. 
So, um, there is no shop segment of the show this week because I don't currently have any yarn that I'm putting up in the shop. I've been working on pre-orders. So a lot of lovely people have ordered um, yarn from me that I hadn't dyed yet, like dyed to order kind of stuff. Um, which if you're ever interested in doing, send me a message through my website or through email. Um, and I'd be happy to take a pre-order from you in whatever current colorway that I dye on whatever base that I carry. I love doing that. I want to want to give you what you want. But, so I will um, make my big announcement now. <laughs> I have begun carrying a mohair silk lace weight base. Uh, you, uh, you already know this base. A lot of people like it. I have always claimed that I probably would not like it. And I was wrong. <laughs> so, um, I've talked about this before. Rhinebeck West is happening uh, the weekend of Rhinebeck, which is in a couple weeks now. And uh, it's happening at The Knitting Tree, which is a yarn shop in Inglewood, Los Angeles. And I have, Moonstone Dye Works has created a, an exclusive colorway just for them, just for that event. And I'm gonna put a picture of it here because I've already sent all of the skeins off to them. And unfortunately, I forgot to dye myself extra skeins to keep. <laughs> so I don't have it to show you, um, but you can check out their Instagram page if you're interested in going to the event or checking out what they're doing or this colorway at all. Um, they're Rhinebeck West on Instagram, and um, it's a really, really beautiful green yarn. I just love it so much. And uh, so if you're in the area that weekend, I really encourage you to go check out this festival. I think it's gonna be freaking awesome. It sounds like so much fun. I am not gonna be able to go because it's really far away. And I don't travel right now because I got this like very young child and stuff and we haven't broached the whole traveling thing yet. But um, I'm very sad to not be able to go. But you should totally go if you live in that area. You should totally go. Anyway, they requested that I dye their exclusive colorway on that base, on mohair lace. Mohair silk lace weight yarn. And so I was like, sure, I could do that. That's totally fine. And then I got it and I dyed on it and I fell in love with it. I have been proven wrong. I'm always proven wrong. I always, I'm, I'm one of these haters that like when things are new and popular, I'm like, man, no, man. Crotchety, man. <laughs> and then I actually give it a chance and I'm like oh yeah that's why everybody likes it because it's awesome so I have started the, the announcement after all of that is that I've start, started dyeing it for the shop I have already listed um, quite a few skeins that have been purchased uh, but you can special order colorways on it and I am gonna be dyeing on it for um, just regular shop updates from here on out in the future and I fell in love with it so hard that I decided that I wanted to knit a sweater out of it in the traditional fashion where you hold the merino silk lace weight together with a merino single fingering weight um, to create kind of a sport weight gauge. Now, there's, there are a few, there are quite a few sweaters already designed and published on Ravelry um, using that kind of fabric, but nothing that I really wanted so I decided to design my own. There are similar things to what I wanted, but nothing exactly what I wanted. So I just figured, like, I could probably figure it out. Like, I'm, I'm a resourceful person. So I have employed, excuse me, dropping things. I have employed the help of a book and stuff. So I'm gonna get, okay. okay. I'm, I'm starting to go off in directions where I don't know where to go next. <laughs> so I'm just going to do this. Uh, I'm going to break it down. Here's the yarn that I'm using. It is Moonstone Dye Works in the Gemini colorway. This is the Mohair Silk Lace Weight Base. This is my Merino Single Base. This is 100% Superwash Merino. And this is 72-28 Mohair Silk. Also single ply, right? No, no, it's not single ply. It's a two-ply. It's a two-ply. So I'm using these two yarns held together. Uh, I swatched to get gauge. Here's my swatch. And 
The fabric is wonderful. I swatched on a size 6 needle, size US 6. And, okay, so what I did is I pulled out this book that I've owned for quite a long time. It's Ann Budd's Top Down Sweaters. Um, and what it does is it gives you a bunch of formulas in like chart form for a bunch of different style, like construction styles of top down sweater. And you get numbers for like your stitch counts according to your gauge and the size you want to end up with. So I got a lot of my numbers from that, but I didn't, I'm not, kind of exactly what I wanted still wasn't quite in that book. So I took some numbers for a certain thing that I found in there as a, as kind of like a guideline. And then I changed some stuff and I'm hoping that my mental, what, what I did in my head to change stuff and put on paper actually works out in my project. So we'll see. Um, I will show you. This is pretty much what I wrote down in terms of like my basic guideline for how I'm gonna make this sweater. And it pretty much just breaks down how I wanna do my cast on, how I wanna do my raglan increases. Okay, so I should tell you now, sorry, I told you I'm getting totally lost. I've never talked about designing something before. So I am designing a top-down V-neck raglan crop top with long sleeves. That's it. Super plain, super simple. So I've got um, just my increases worked out, my raglan increases, the v-neck. I want to get as deep of a v-neck as I can. Um, and I kind of just have all those numbers worked out with vague instructions for myself. So let's show you my actual project. That is what I have so far. And I just love it. I really love this colorway. Gemini is kind of a very special colorway to me. It's, I just really like it. It's a very like brown, taupey kind of gold color. So, um, so what is it called? The spectacular gold along? Knitting vicariously is doing a knit along where you knit gold things and it's called, it's called the gold along, something kind of gold. <laughs> but so this is my entry into the gold along. Hmm. Um, so I pretty much, I cast on at the top here and then I've started doing my raglan increases. So that's kind of the, the thing of the thing right there. I'm using my Haya Haya interchangeable needles and I mean, it's going good so far. It's super simple so far. It's just stocking it with raglan increases. Now, the increases that I am currently doing are make one left, make one right, uh, with two stitches in between. Now, this is my second time knitting this far. I knit this already once to this point, pretty much. And I started out just doing um, make one left, then make one right, right next to each other. And what I discovered about that is that when you do that without any stitches in between, you're doing it into the same leg. Like when you do a make one right, you're picking up a bar from the stitch below and you're creating a stitch out of that. You're twisting it, knitting into it, and that creates the new stitch. Now, when you do a make one left and a make one right, right next to each other, you're using the same bar for both of your stitches. So it kind of... It creates a hole is what it does. And I realized that if you remember my um, diaphanous raglan, I had holes all along my raglan increases and I didn't know exactly why that was. That's why. <laughs> and I can't remember because some people didn't have those. Um, but whatever the pattern said to do, I'm not sure. Whatever other, whatever other people did, I'm not sure but I know that that's why I had those holes. And so, I mean, it was just really interesting to me because I knew, I figured out that that's what created those holes because I was kind of confused about that before. But so that's what happens when you do that. And it's not something I even thought about. I was like, okay, there's my stitch marker for my raglan shaping. I want increases on either side. So I just did them right next to each other. Now I thought about, when I realized that that's what was happening, 
I was like, okay, I like it on my diaphanous. Maybe I'll just leave them and I'll have like, you know, little eyelets. So, so, they're not eyelets, but you know what I mean. Little eyelet looking things on the raglan increases. Well, I thought about it and I thought about it and I went back and forth and I was real wishy-washy about it. And I decided I didn't want that. For no very good reason, I just decided I didn't want it. <laughs> so I ripped back and uh, I started over and put two stitches between my increases. And I think that's pretty, I think it looks really good. I mean, it looks really simple, really basic. So anyway, that's where I'm at so far with my sweater design. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm actually really excited about it. I've never um, made up a sweater pattern or designed one. Uh, now, I'm going back and forth whether I want to keep it all stock in it or if I want to add some stuff. Because when I have, I feel like I have a blank canvas, right? It's just what I'm planning is a really basic construction. And what I'm doing right now is stockinette. So that's kind of like, I could do whatever I want on it. You know what I mean? Um, now, I wouldn't be doing anything all over. For one, because I don't want to. But for two, because I don't want to do too much that is going to affect gauge. So if I do anything, it's going to be like, I don't know, like to the hem or maybe just like a couple like spotty embellishments or like a single embellishment in one spot or something on the sleeves maybe. I don't really know yet. I haven't decided. I've been kind of looking through some like stitch dictionaries and like just thinking about like all the different like elements in knitting, like things you can do with the knit stitch. Um, you know, like, like lace and different types of ribbing and like bobbles and like different textury things and different like, you know, the Barbara Walker stitch, stitch books give like little like panels of things where you can, it's just like a single stitch pattern panel that you can just kind of like put places, you know what I mean? So I don't know, we'll see, I'm still thinking about it. But uh, it could just be all, all over stock in it. I don't know yet. So again, I'm super stoked about this. I've been having a lot of fun working on it. And it is living in a Lost and Fawn project bag, which is beautiful and has a sparkly canvas bottom. So it doesn't have a name yet. I mean, I'm using the Gemini colorway, so maybe the Gemini sweater. <laughs> I don't know. If you have any ideas, let me know. Um, okay, so, and I'm using this to... Usually I use an app on my phone to count rows, <laughs> but I'm doing it the uh, old school way right now because I was trying to knit on it with, well, I was knitting on it when I was uh, during the power outage. So I didn't want to waste my phone battery on stitch count on row counts. Nope. Okay. Okay. That's it for stuff I've been working on. Um, now, let me go grab the other thing that I'm no longer working on because I left it over there because I'm not working on it anymore. I'll be right back. <sighs> okay, so if you've been watching the vlogs, you know. Or if you've just been watching the podcast and keeping on top of what I've been knitting, you may have noticed its absence in this episode. It's my arachna. And... You may know a couple things, um, you may notice that there are a couple different things about it from when you saw it last time. So I finished the body, I bound off. It is mostly done. It's got a partial sleeve, but no needle in it. I stopped, I stopped working on it. I'm not gonna finish. <laughs> um, okay, so the Arachna is a top-down yoke Colorwork Yoke Pullover by Andy Satterlin. It's part of her current like Halloween collection. And I am knitting it out of Elemental Effects Cormo Sport, which is this yarn. And this is the main yarn for the color work in the yoke. I used a combination of some hand spun from Spunky Eclectic Fibers and a lace weight pink yarn from Fiber Nymph Dye Works, which came out really beautifully. But um, pretty much 
I, you know, I talked about this last time. I was worried about the fit. I was kind of thinking I might not like it. So what I did is I blocked it. And um, since I had the body done and some of a sleeve done, I felt like I could get a pretty good uh, idea of how the finished garment was going to fit. And I don't like it. Ew. <laughs> I just don't like it. It fits the way it's supposed to fit. I was kind of worried about, like, it not looking like, uh, you know, like the pattern picture is supposed to look. But it does. It fits totally fine. It fits exactly how it's supposed to fit, I think. I just don't love it on me. Um, I'm not going to try it on right now, but if you're interested in seeing me try it on, I did try it on in one of my vlogs, and I kind of, you were with me through my whole decision-making process. So I've linked that episode up here. But, um, so if you're interested in seeing that, you can check that out. But, uh... Essentially, I don't love it, and so I don't want to work on it anymore. Which, I mean, I'm almost done. I only have like a sleeve and a half left to go. But uh, I just don't feel like spending time on something that I don't re that I'm not really excited about right now. Um, I have too many other sweaters on the needles that I am really excited about, and I want to work on them. And I just, <laughs> this sounds so mean. I just don't care about this anymore right now. Uh, so originally my decision was to frog it because that's kind of how I do things. I go all the way one way or another. I don't like to like let things sit. I need it finished or I need it gone. <laughs> but um, with this, I did, I decided to frog it and I was about to frog it. I was like, I was like ready to pull the first strand out and I was like, <sighs> so <laughs> I changed my mind. And what I decided to do is just to hibernate it. I'm just going to let it sit unfinished for however long I need to let it sit unfinished. And I don't have plans for this yarn currently. So I don't feel a huge desire to get the yarn ready for something else. Honestly, I'm kind of weird with yarn. Like, I love a lot of yarn, right? Uh, but once I knit with a particular yarn, like a particular skein of yarn, and like not a particular type of yarn, but a particular skein of yarn with its own individual features, I kind of am done with it usually. Like I don't, like I don't mind frogging things, but after I do, I typically feel like I'm just done with the yarn. You know what I mean? I don't know. Is that weird? I don't know. But so I don't have a desire to knit with this yarn again, at least anytime soon. So, and you never know, maybe a year down the line, come next Halloween, I'll pick this back up and I'll be like, you know what, what was I thinking? That was stupid. I love it. I'm going to finish it. So it's just going to sit in hibernation and I'm going to forget about it for a little while. And I think I'm going to be very happy with that decision. Um, and a lot of you in the comments to that vlog were in support of not frogging it. So thank you so much for your input. I, uh, I had a lot of fun reading through your comments and uh, talking to you guys about that. Um, but yeah, it's just going to sit here for a little while. And that's it. That's it. I'm done with it. It's... <sighs> it feels good. It feels really good to do that. Okay, so that's all my uh, stuff that I have been making, and I have one small thing for a favorites section topic. So, I used to have these scissors. I got them, I think, in like a gift package from the Loopy U a really, really long time ago. And they were like my favorite scissors ever. And I'd never had like tiny little scissors that were as good as these tiny little scissors were. And they're my favorite scissors. I just love them. I used them for everything. I used them for like snipping yarn and for like working with sewing, like snipping threads and stuff. And then one day they went missing. I have no idea where they are. They've been missing maybe for a year or something. I don't know. But I have looked everywhere I can think of for them and they are lost. So, well, these are them. These, I did not find them, but just so you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it, 
It's these scissors. They are by, oh shoot, Merchant and Mills. Merchant and Mills is the brand. They're like a sewing supply company and they also do sewing patterns. Um, and so I decided to go looking for them again and just buy a replacement pair. Uh, so I went online and I found them a few places. A few places were sold out, but what I, the place that I ended up buying them from <laughs> was uh, Boston, wait, Boston General, Boston General Store. So I found them on this website. I, it was just like the cheapest with the cheapest shipping. So that's why I decided to go with them. Um, and I think they were like six fifty, and then like, I don't know, maybe like $10 with shipping, which is like a lot for a teeny, teeny, tiny pair of scissors. But you know what? It was worth it because I missed the freaking freak out of these scissors while they were gone. So, um, it was funny though, because I found them on this website and while I was on the website, I, in my head, had confused Boston General, which I had never heard of before, with Brooklyn General, which is a yarn shop. <laughs> and so I thought I was buying them through Brooklyn General. And so I had them in my cart and I was like, you know what? Well, I'm making a purchase from Brooklyn General, which is supposed to be really cool. Like, I'm going to peruse around and see what else I might want. And so I, like, looked for the yarn section and I couldn't find it. So I, like, searched yarn and, like, almost nothing came up. And I was like, that's weird. Maybe they don't sell their yarn online. And then I realized I was not at Brooklyn General. I was at this place called Boston General, which is kind of cool. I ended up like browsing their website for a little while. They, they carry a lot of like home goods that are, I want to say a combination of like old timey and like small manufactured, good quality kind of stuff. So they had a lot of really neat stuff. I didn't end up buying anything because like I'm, I'm not really tempted by things I don't need like that. Like I'm tempted by things, but kind of looking at them is enough. I don't tend to like buy something unless I really need it. Anyway, so I bought these awesome scissors through Boston General, but you can get them at other websites too. Um, they're just like this black matte metal and just the snipping action of them is really smooth. It's like, I don't know if there's a word for this, but if you know uh, what typing on a keyboard feels like, like when you press a key, I think it's called the key action or something like that, that with certain keyboards can be really, it, it feels different with different keyboards, right? And you can like have your own preferences on like the key action and like what is really satisfying to push, you know, like. So I feel like the way these like, like the snip action, <laughs> Is kind of, it, it equates to like the key action on a keyboard. It's really nice. It's really nice. And uh, they actually, Merchant and Mills makes a bunch of other scissors that are bigger. They make some of these little like snips that are bigger as well, but also like real scissors. And I was tempted to get some bigger scissors, but I did not. I stuck to what I was actually looking for. And I'm happy I did that because I'm super happy to have these scissors back in my life. It's a minor luxury, but it makes me really happy. <laughs> so that's my one favorite are my Merchant and Mill scissors. Uh, yeah. All right, yo, I'm gonna leave you there because I'm done. That is all I have to talk about. I hope you have been having a fantastic October. October, as I say more often than I probably need to, is my second favorite month of the year. I love it. I love this month. It's starting to get really cold and crispy outside. Fallen leaves are everywhere. We're having fires now. We just got a quart of wood delivered. So we had our first fire the other night and it was glorious. Um, it's just getting to be the season. I've been wearing a lot of my hand knit sweaters this month. Uh, as you may have been seeing on the vlogs, uh, I've been kind of forgetting to talk about what I'm wearing on the vlogs, but uh, I've been wearing a hand knit sweater most days so far this month and it's really amazing so yeah i hope you're having a good time what are you doing i would love to hear about it have you gone to pumpkin patches are you gonna do something fun for halloween are you gonna carve pumpkins have you been eating lots of autumnal foods like kale and squashes i would love to hear about it tell me about it in the comments below 
Join in on the flashy make long if you are making something that makes a statement. Uh, follow along with the blogs if you're interested. Uh, there will be a playlist of them on my channel, so if you don't want to scroll through just the random video section, you can go to the playlists and go to the Vlogtober 2019 section and they'll all be listed in there. And I'm, I'm trying to think of anything else I'm forgetting to say. I don't think so. Oh yeah, oh yeah. If you like the video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you haven't already, it would be much appreciated. Okay, have fun and stay awesome, you guys. Bye.